Hello creepy friends. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing a flip through of my bullet journal. You may have already seen a couple weeks ago I put out a mid-year flip through of my reading journal which is my main artistic journal that I do so it has my most uh, time consuming and complicated art in that one. So if you'd like to take a look at that I'll put the link in the description box and in the card. But this journal is my bullet journal and I started this a little bit later in the year. I think I started in March and it's a little more experimental and it's a little less uh, specifically artistic than my reading journal. But I still want to do a flip through and let you see the evolution of things and where I'm at now. I am starting to get a little more complex in this one as well. So get cozy, grab a drink if you'd like, and let's get started. Okay, so this is my opening spread. It has the year over here and the entire year to glance over here with all the months, just so I have a calendar that I can refer back to. And I did this very simply. I had already set up my reading journal and done a lot of preparation for the year already before I even started working on this. So um, I didn't want to get too complicated and be very, very time consuming because I had already done that. For these yearly spreads, I just chose this green color and black and gold and very simple lettering and numbers. And that's it. And I used a serif font, just a general serif font. I'm sure I googled serif fonts and just copied one that I like the look of. This is um, Zebra Mild Liner, the green. The black is an acrylic paint pen. This black over here is just regular ballpoint pen. And then the gold is gel pen. So that's that. Okay. Now we're flipping into the future log. And usually in this kind of uh, more aesthetic bullet journaling, I don't, maybe they do it in the regular bullet journal system as well, the official system. A future log is pretty common. It's where you have all of the days of the year. Um, this is done, I did this in two different spreads. So I have January through June on this spread and then July through December on the following spread. And this is where you can write things that are going to happen way in the future in the year. Because usually when you do bullet journaling, you do your monthly spreads at the beginning of each month. So let's say it's March and I want to write down a birthday or an appointment that's in June. I don't have the June spreads done yet in the, in the monthly spreads. So this is where you can write those things down. And then when you do each month at the beginning of the month, you can look here and see if there's anything that you need to add to that calendar. And I have uh, censored a little bit here just with some brown craft paper. Um, if there are any kind of personal items or people's birthdays, things like that. I have the days of the week just written down in a column in each of these months. And then I have, for ease of reference, I have just highlighted Saturday and Sunday on all of these with that green mild liner marker, just so I can tell where the weeks are. So that, like I said, this is January through June. And this is July through December. And I really enjoyed this kind of cleaner look compared to my reading journal. I do enjoy things that are maximalist and sometimes I enjoy things that are minimalist. So it all just depends on what kind of mood I'm in at the time. And then you can see I've drawn a little YouTube icon on the days when I'm supposed to be releasing a YouTube video. Just for quick reference. Okay. Now I haven't made very many yearly spreads because I don't use my bullet journal quite as much as some other people might. I use this a some of the time, but I also use a lot of um, computer-based tracking and scheduling things as well. 
So I'm not putting absolutely everything into this paper. Now this is a really fun spread and I did see this on somebody else's journaling yearly setup and I can't remember who it was. So sorry about that, but I, I know several people have done this and have shown this in their videos. These are the themes for each month for my reading journal, my main artistic journal. That is the, the main thing that I do on my YouTube channel each month. And I decided that would be a really fun thing at the end of the year to be able to just come back and look at this, my, like my inspiration for each of these monthly themes. And I printed out each of these photos with my HP Sprocket printer. And this is what it looks like. It's just a little um, photo printer that prints on sticker paper. This particular one prints in two inches by three inches. And it works pretty good for these purposes. Again, I'll have a link to everything that I've used in this journal in the description box. So if you see any materials that you like, you can find the link down there. So for this, again, I wanted to be the layout to be very simple because I knew I was going to put color photos in here. I didn't want anything busy kind of around them. So I just made a simple gold box and wrote the name of the month in black pen and that's it. And then I just chose whatever I thought was the most representative of the reference photos that I used when I was brainstorming for that particular month's spreads. So, all right, now we're gonna move on to my monthly spreads. All right, so like I said, I did start this journal a little bit later in the year than I did with my reading journal. My reading journal I've been doing for a couple of years now, but this is the first year that I've actually done a planner bullet journal. So this is all, like I said, experimental for me. And so March was the first month that I set it up. And I didn't even know if I was even gonna make videos out of my bullet journal. At that time, I thought maybe I wouldn't even be showing this to anybody, it was just for me. But now, uh, as you'll see a little bit later on, I am starting to get a little more uh, artistic with my spreads uh, now. So as you can see here for March, I did a little computery diskette theme, which I thought was really cute. And that is because what I was doing at the beginning was using this bullet journal as a way to show you a simpler version, an easier version, of the theme that I had in my reading journal. So for example, March in my reading journal was a retro computer theme. I'll probably pop a picture up here of that so you can see just as an example what March looks like in my reading journal. And so that was my idea. My idea was that I could do a really fancy, very artistic, time-consuming version in my reading journal and then show you an alternative simpler version of how to do it in this bullet journal. But it ended up, I think, as content, not that interesting because it was a little bit too repetitive. It was a little bit uh, repetitive for me as well. So the first couple months here you'll see are like that, but then it switches in July. So for this particular spread, what I did was, again, I was experimenting, so I used craft paper for the boxes of the calendar. And then I wanted to use kind of minimal tools here at the beginning, so I just used an acrylic paint pen to do this pinkish, peaches, pinkish peachy color, and then a ballpoint pen, and that's it. And then I also, I loved watching other people's videos where they had like Dutch doors and like waterfall tabs and all kinds of fun things like that. So this first month in March, I did a bunch of uh, tabs here in like a Dutch door. So I believe what is considered a Dutch door is when you cut off part of the page. And so you have some smaller pages inside of normal sized pages. And the way I set up this month was I put a to-do list on either side of the Dutch doors so that you can still see it when you flip these. And I put my just normal to-do stuff over here and my content creation to-do over here. 
And then I put all my days of the week in here so I could say, so I could write down all of my tasks and appointments and things on each day. So I think that went pretty well. Um, it was still the rainy season here, so I was recording the days that it rained at the beginning of the year. And this worked out pretty good. I do think that I'm wasting a lot of page space that I could have had by cutting that much off, but I liked how it looked. And then I put a little washi tape on each of these tabs to make them stand out a little bit more. And that's it. That's all I had in here for the month of March. And you'll also see that um, I alternated the design on these weekly spreads. So this one looks like the folders on the computer. And then this one looks kind of like a window open on a computer. And I just alternated them like that. All right, moving on to April. My reading journal theme for April was fireflies. So I did a simple version of that again here. I chose yellow as the main color and I used a little bit of gold and then just again my black ballpoint pen. And then I did my calendar here and then I did a little habit tracker here. Again you can see that I used it for like about a week and then stopped doing it which is pretty much my MO when it comes to trackers. So. This might be one of my favorites from that period of time when I was doing the same theme in both journals. All right, then flipping over to the weeklies. So I still did that same kind of layout here with a to-do list that I ended up not writing anything in there and then a content creation checklist on this side. And I had possible jury duty in April and luckily I didn't get called so I didn't have to go in. Um, again, I used these little Dutch doors and I put washi tape on the tabs. And so I have Monday through Wednesday on this side and then Thursday and Friday and then Saturday and Sunday shared a box there so that I could have six boxes on each of these spreads. And if you've watched my videos, you may have noticed that Yellow is one of my favorite colors. I'm super into yellow and orange and pink. Those are probably the three colors that I use the most. So you'll see that a lot in any of my journals that you take a look at. Okay. And I put a quote up here from Arthur Conan Doyle uh, about fireflies. His sanguine spirit turns every firefly into a star. And that's because I needed to fill in that space up there, but I didn't want to just write April again. So I found a quote that was matching the theme and stuck it in there. Okay, next is May. And this is my origami theme month. And this is what my reading journal looked like in May. So again, here's some orange, like I was just saying. I love orange. And I used that orange acrylic paint pen, my gold gel pen again, which again, I guess is also one of my favorites. We're seeing it a lot here. And I just did little paper cranes, little doodles of paper cranes and stars, and then put some dots in the background. And then here's the monthly calendar. Again, I tried, <laughs> I tried the, uh, the tracker the habit tracker again and again was unsuccessful i stopped after like 10 days there so i do give up on those eventually in this journal because it's just not something that i use okay now at this point i was starting to realize that it was getting really uneven in this journal when you try to write on it because you get like a cliff that falls off when you're writing across here because I cut out so much from all of those um, Dutch doors. So I did this a little bit differently. I have them the full height of the page and just the edge cut off. So I was experimenting a little bit there. 
and I still kept my regular to do on this side and my content creation to do on this side. And I was also experimenting over here with something else that I found on Elizabeth from Plant Based Brides channel, which is a rolling task list. And again, it's something that I really like in concept, but in practice, I don't tend to actually come back and use it. So I think this is the only month that I did it, or maybe one more month, but I, I don't do it anymore. I have to make things very simple for myself, but that's what I meant by this is my experimental journal. I like to try out things, maybe try out things artistically, try out things like layout wise or how I want to track things and then if it doesn't work or I don't use it then I just don't do it the next time. So I think this was um, kind of a wasting page space because I didn't need that big of a, of a space for that. And then you'll see that I kind of fell off of using my bullet journal for a couple of weeks here. And that's totally okay. Journaling is like any other habit. You use it when it works for you to use it and you don't have to force yourself to use it every day. So um, I ended up the last week of the month, I was like, oh, I have all these things I need to get done. So then I came back in and started writing things in here again. All right, moving on to June. Now this is going to be the last month that corresponds to my reading journal, but here's what my reading journal look like in June. So this is my jellyfish theme and I just used the moon jellies specifically in here because they're the easiest ones to draw. And I was experimenting with a new material for this journal, which are these washi tape circular stickers that I just got off of Amazon. And this is what they look like. This is the color way that I actually used. And so I thought that would be fun to use that. I tend to do a lot of drawing of dots and circles and, and stars and things in the background to fill in my background space, but I thought that would be an interesting thing to use. They kind of look like bubbles. And this is the month where I abandoned that habit tracker because I knew I wasn't using it. So I have my monthly calendar here and then I just decided to put my um, YouTube video checklist down here instead. And my Dutch doors got a little bit bigger here too, so I only have a little bit cut off around the edge of these. And I guess I did keep this rolling task list for one more month, but I made it smaller so it's not taking up as much space. And I went on a trip that month, so I took this little space to write my little packing list of everything that I needed to take and not forget. And then you'll see, while I was on my trip, I did not really use this journal much at all, so I have a lot of blanks there. So June is my pretty empty month here, but like I said, that's okay. This journal is here to serve me and what I need, so it's available if I need it, but I don't have to do it all the time. And now we're going to move on to July. So July is where I've decided to abandon that idea of keeping the same theme in both journals every month, and so this is now not no longer corresponding with my reading journal anymore. So this is my button theme. This was a really fun idea. I really had a good time with this. And this is the first time that I tried doing waterfall tabs. So if you haven't seen this before, or you don't know that that's what they're called, waterfall tabs is when you cut off a little bit of each page and you cut a little bit less off as you go back. And then they kind of all line up like this. So. That was fun to do. I just used washi tape to do the edges like that. And I used a color theme for this, which is not usually a color theme that I go for, which is these cooler colors, green and blue. And for the buttons, I cut out circles in the same washi tapes, and then I also used the brown craft paper. 
around the edge. So I did use a lot more materials here. So this is where things are getting a little more complicated and, and artistic and craftier. I still do more like painting and like full blown drawing um, in my reading journal, but I did get a lot more artistic from this point onward in this journal as well. And then let's go through our tabs here. So the first little tab here is the monthly calendar, a little task list for the month. And uh, I just had this little extra box and I haven't figured out what to do with it yet. So there we go. And we are still in July right now as of me filming this. So um, this isn't all filled in yet. And here's the first week. So I just did simple horizontal boxes Monday through Sunday, and then a little notes box to fill in the last gap there. Same thing here, uh, horizontal boxes and a notes box. And then you'll see the nature of these waterfall tabs is as you flip each time, you get a little more space to work with. And for the last two weeks in July, I switched to these vertical layouts. So I have a little more space across the bottom here. And this is where I put my checklist for my YouTube videos and then a little notes box right there. And I tried to make the, the heading of each of the boxes slightly different in each of these. So in this week, I use a little circle of craft paper. I just use marker here. Then I did a strip of craft paper on this one. And then in the last week of the month, which is where we are right now, um, I did these verticals again. I went back to using that circle. And then I have a sleep tracker, which I stopped recording in the middle of the month again. And a mood tracker, which I did like using, but the problem was that um, these buttons I drew with regular ballpoint pen and if I try to color it in with these markers it just smears the black pen everywhere so I am going to continue making mood trackers because I think they're fun to make and they're fun to use but this one I stopped using just because it was messing up all my markers so if I had completed this uh, this sleep tracker what I would have done is Put a little line between each of the dots just so it'd be a little easier to see what the patterns were there. I am not a great sleeper. I tend to get insomnia a lot of the time, but um, it was just too much for me to remember to come in here and record it every day. And then if it was a couple of days past, I couldn't remember anymore. <laughs> so, and then this is my August one. And if you are somebody who watches my videos on a regular basis, you will have seen uh, my setup video for this August spread. Uh, I put it out just last week, so I will link to that if you'd like to see how I set this all up. It was a very time consuming process because of all of these squares and all of these lines and everything geometric. But this is one of my favorite things that I've ever made, I think, is this these waterfall tabs that have this chessboard um, design on the edge and when they all overlap, bam, you can't see it anymore. I was so proud of this. This took me forever. I had to get these all to line up perfectly with each other. So I had to take these little stickers off and move them around like a million times, but it was worth it because it is so satisfying to look at. So. Like I said, I'm filming this at the end of July, so this is the future, so there won't be anything filled out in uh, this month yet. But I used the brown craft paper to do the chess pieces and these this chessboard pattern over here. Use my yellow acrylic paint pen again, and then use my black ballpoint pen to do 10 bajillion lines <laughs> to give it the three-dimensional look here. And then I just have August along the side. So let's flip through these real quick have my calendar here. I couldn't fit like a, a block calendar. So I just did a, a list style of a calendar and a little task box down here. And then the first week is just simple boxes. 
So it was the second week. Sort of to follow along with this little pond over here. I added a little couple ponds to the bottom for decoration there. And then here is my YouTube uh, checklist for my YouTube videos down there. And then I did three dimensional boxes here. And for the mood tracker, I made a chessboard and then I'll just fill in each of the white boxes um, to track my mood. I haven't decided if I'm gonna color it in or if I'm gonna do a little black and white pattern yet, but I will decide that when I get into August. And then the last week of August, um, I did similar uh, pillars like this in here, and then these are the days of the week. So that's it. Um, oh, I forgot to mention too, um, this notebook is from Cognitive Surplus. I love Cognitive Surplus. If you see this, sponsor me because I'm the only person talking about these products on the internet that I've ever seen. <laughs> But um, let me show you a couple of my other journals from them. So Cognitive Surplus makes these scientific type journals. They have hardcover, they have softcover. They have all of these beautiful like science related designs. And I think they're gorgeous. The paper is good quality. I don't think they're meant for this kind of artistic usage. Um, but the paper works pretty good. There is a little bit of bleeding because, like I said, they're meant for note taking. Um, but they're good quality and I think they're so pretty. So, um, and you can get all kinds of different paper on the inside. Dotted, blank, lined. You can get black paper. And this is what the cover of this one looks like. Um, this is the Mineral Kingdom one. So it's all kinds of gems and minerals on the front of this one so and this is a hardcover all right so that's my quick flip through of my bullet journal thank you so much for joining me for another flip through i really enjoy doing all this content and i really uh, appreciate every single one of you who watch my videos thank you so much i'm putting out one to two videos every week. I've started making read with me ambiance videos where uh, it's kind of an ASMR type of video. So that's a nice reading ambiance. You can put it on when you're reading, when you're relaxing, when you're studying, that kind of thing. And then I am continuing to do the main core of my channel, which are my book review and journaling content videos. So every month I do a video where I review all the books I read in the previous month and every month I do a monthly setup in my reading journal and another video that's the monthly setup in this bullet journal. Um, so if that sounds interesting to you, subscribe. If you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. And you can also join me on Instagram and on my website. My handle on Instagram is at biblio underscore creep and my website is bibliocreep.com. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope I see you again in the upcoming months and weeks and take care of yourself. Don't forget to drink your water and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.